All right, this is a problem in finite element, and we are working with a truss structure that can be seen right here. We have a force that's acting at node 1, and it's 5,000 pounds. They want us to find the displacement in the horizontal and vertical direction here at node 1, and they also want us to find the stress in element 1, which is right here. So let's see what we have. Our global coordinate system is right here at point 2, x in this direction, y going up. At the same time we can also see that we have 60 degrees, 60 degrees here, we have this distance given. So this is an equilateral triangle, we would have another 60 here, so that means this and this, both lengths are also 100 inches. So first order of business, let's uh, set up our local coordinate systems for both of our elements. And this is uh, kind of a tricky idea where we may need to make sure in this problem or when you have different truss setups that whenever you select the local coordinate systems, make sure they follow each other. They are oriented in the same direction. And let me show you what I mean. At 2, I'm going to pick my x prime going this way. So, you would think it's easy. This is a fixed support. So, here too, let, let me just pick it from here, go that way. But that would be wrong. That would mess up your calculation. So, the correct way to keep them oriented in the same direction is coming up this way. So, therefore, from here, for uh, our second element... I need to pick it this way. My x prime, the local coordinate for my second bar, is coming down this way. x prime that way, x prime this way. These two will help us find the angle between the global coordinate system and the local coordinate system for each element. So let's get started with our first element and the angle that we're going to be working with for this element is 60 degrees as we can see here global coordinate x and the degree between this and my prime x prime is 60 degrees cosine theta sine theta we're just gonna mark them as c and s for simplicity so we don't have to write so much Cosine of 60 degrees, 1 half. Sine of 60 degrees, square root 3 over 2. Now, this is the formula that we're going to be working with. Local K, stiffness matrix, local stiffness matrix, AE over L. And this beauty, bunch of sines and cosines together in this matrix. And as you can tell, that the lower half is symmetric to the this half. First I'm just gonna calculate AE over L right here so I don't have to write so many times. 10 to the 10, 10 times 10 to the fourth that will be our value and let's expand our local stiffness matrix K belonging to element 1. All we do is simply fill out this matrix cosine 1 half squared which is one fourth goes right here every single one follow it and fill it out now on top of it and by the side of this matrix i like to mark what uh, what i'm talking about so element one is bordered on this side by point two this side by point one so i'm going to go ahead and mark these locations there you go Displacement in the x direction at point 2, displacement in the y direction at point 2, and point 1, point 2, point 1. This way I know exactly what's happening and where these values belong. This will be very important when we make our global sti stiffness matrix. Okay, let's continue and find our local stiffness matrix for element 2. First, what angle are we working with here? I drew the same structure here again and I extended my x prime to continue 
downwards and I extended my X to go continue horizontally and therefore now we can see clearly what angle is between them. If this angle is the same as inside it, both are 60, but it's below the X, so therefore we'll be working with negative 60 degrees. Cosine 60, sine negative 60, cosine negative 60, sine negative 60. Here are the values. We're using the same formula again. This one, plug in the values. Please fill it out. And also, just like we did here, let's mark what kind of information are we talking about. Element 2 is bordered by point 1 and point 3. Therefore, displacement in the horizontal direction at point 1, displacement in the vertical at point 1, again at point 3, point 3, same thing filled out. Now we have both our local stiffness matrices. We are ready to create our global stiffness matrix. Now, here it is. We're going to take the info that we had here, we had here, and let's join it together, put it into our global stiffness matrix, our K capital, fill in the information above it, U3, V3, there you go, U1, V1, U2, V2, U3, V3, same going downwards. Now here's a bit of an interesting approach to this situation. Make sure you do, uh, don't forget the value of the AE over L, like I did over here. So I marked it under it, that it goes right there in front of it. Now, how do we deal with this complex matrix? Because this will take a lot of time to fill out. It's a lot of information. We need to take these and transfer them here. If you're not sure how we transfer these informations to our global stiffness matrix, I have a few videos before this one where I go over it in more detail, but now I'm just going to focus on the process here. So it will take a lot of time to fill all these out. And in this case, if you can't see this special trick, then just simply do it. It'll just take a lot of time, but you will end up in the same place where if you would taken the shortcut. So the shortcut is that instead of filling this out first, let's think ahead, where are we heading? We are interested in the displacements, right? So therefore we're gonna be relying on the force on a spring, F equals KX setup, where we're gonna write up F equals K and times displacement. But we are not representing a uh, our elements with springs, they are bars, so therefore our K is AE over L times this matrix, right? So what do we do after this step? The next step that we will take is to expand it. All our forces, our global stiffness matrix, this is the filled out version of this one. So I solved it. This is what I would like to try to avoid in a normal problem doing. So it's all filled out, every single location filled in with its information. Then times by the displacements at U1, V1, U2, V2, U3, V3. Now, after we would have done all this, what would we do? We would have to check which locations are zero here. Point two, point three are both fixed, they are not going to move in either x or y direction. Therefore, we can go ahead and mark everything here, which would be a zero. U2, V2, zero, zero. Both of these, zero. U3, V3, zero and zero. So, since we have these values as zero, that means that whenever we would continue to the next step, we could ignore this line, this line, this line, this line. And that goes with it that these lines also would be out. So therefore, as we would continue to our next step, what do we have left? We are working with these two. This little square right here 
and these two right here. So therefore, if we could foresee this, that we don't need U2, V2, U3, V3, don't even bother finding all this, because it's just going to be a waste of time anyway. Now, with our partial global stiffness matrix, I'm going to go ahead and work on my formula right here, F equals KD, K times D, expand it out with only the values that I'm interested in, U1, V1, my stiffness matrix plugged in, the information that we have here, U U1, V1, plug in the one that we know, F1, X is 5000, it's given, in the y direction, do we have anything happening? No, there's no force, so therefore zero. Solve for u1, v1, and here are our values for the displacement at node 1, right there. We know that it's gonna displace in the horizontal direction, 0 0.1 inches, in the vertical direction will be zero. Now, the last question of the problem, stress in element one here's the formula that we've been we're gonna be working with stress for a bar in x y plane stress equals we're gonna have this matrix c prime times the displacement and then the c prime is defined as e over l minus cosine minus sine cosine sine here it is i'm gonna go ahead and plug everything in We have our displacement that border our element 1, point 2 and point 1. Keep them in the same order as you have your x prime pointed. So x2, I mean location 2, location 1. So plug them in in the same order. 2 comes first, point 1 comes after. So u2, v2, u1, v1. If you would be interested in element 2 stress as well, then you would have to plug in here U1, V1, and here U3, V3. Therefore, from here we know, uh, let's see, U1 we found, V1 is 0, U2, V2 also 0, so there's a bunch of zeros. We can go ahead actually and cross them out, 0, 0, U1 is the only one that has a value, V1 also, 0, 0, 0, go ahead, multiply this out, this becomes 100,000 times 1 half, this is the only value that gonna survive the multiplication with all these zeros, so 1 half times the value of U1, 0.1, and that's gonna give us a stress in element 1 of 5,000 PSI.